At Portia and Curtis Place, Portia vents that she won't let Spencer worm his way into Trina's heart again. Curtis warns her to tread lightly as she could push Trina right into his arms. Cordia needs another drink when suddenly there is a knock at the door. It's Taggart, who is back in town. He came right after seeing the photos of Trina with Spencer in the paper and wonders if he should be worried. Curtis feels they need to give Trina space to figure out her own life, but Taggart tells him that he's not Trina's father. Curtis knows he's not Trina's father, but he speaks from experience that Trina doesn't like people telling her what to do. Taggart stands with Portia and won't let their daughter get mixed up with the Cassidines. He asks them to have Trina call in later. Taggart heads out, and Portia tells Curtis that Taggart can be territorial. Curtis gets that and will keep his parenting advice to himself until they have one of their own. Portia looks concerned. Portia asks Curtis if he really sees himself being a father. Curtis would love nothing more than to continue the Ashford name with a child of his own. Diane meets with Spencer at Sonny's, and he explains wants to hire her to get custody of Esm's baby. Diane says for this to happen, Esm would have to be stripped of all parental rights. And frankly, Laura would have a better chance at going for custody. He asks if a sibling could gain custody. Confused, Diane quickly realizes Nicholas is the baby's father. Spencer asks if he has any chance. Diane says this is a complicated situation, but Spencer recalls Michael gained custody of Avery. Diane reminds him it was short-lived and Michael returned the girl. Spencer says if he has it his way, this baby will never know either of their parents. Diane asks if this is about the child or revenge. Spencer admits taking this child from his father is just icing on the cake. He states Ism is dangerous, and his father is toxic and damaging. He won't watch his father damage another child's heart and self-esteem the way he did his. Diane says that was well said, and they can put forward that argument. She reminds him that stripping parental rights from two parents is a long shot, and he'll be playing defense after two stints in Pentonville. She warns him she can't guarantee him a win. Diane agrees to take his case. She counsels him to think long and hard about how far he is willing to go, because this wildfire will rage with unforeseen consequences once it is lit. In the hospital chapel, Nicholas tells Liz that there is no evidence of Esmond at Windermere, thanks to Victor, who knows everything. However, he promises Victor doesn't know of her involvement as he kept her out of it. If it comes to it, he vows to take all the blame. Right now, he's worried more about Esmond talking. Liz doesn't think she'll remember any time soon. Nicholas forgot to ask if she ever found out why she was losing time. She did and gives him the short version of what her parents did to her and why. She has some empathy for Esme as she's been where she is, struggling with lost memories. She wishes there was a way Esme would never get her memory back, but that's next to impossible. Liz leaves and Nicholas mumbles, never say never.